Have you ever stopped to imagine what could happen when you combine two materials so different, yet so present in the daily lives of any creative and curious artisan? Silicone and paint thinner. It seems unlikely, strange, and even a little risky, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what we're going to try today. And the result of this unusual combination, I guarantee, will surprise you in ways you might never have imagined before. We start with the silicone. To maintain control and ensure precision in the process, I use a highly sensitive scale and carefully separate 50 grams. But here's the most important detail. This quantity isn't a fixed rule. It all depends on your needs, the size of the project you intend to complete, and even the type of surface you want to transform, bringing flexibility and freedom to the experience. This is where the second ingredient, thinner, a powerful solvent, comes in. I measure out 100 milliliters, maintaining the ideal ratio. For every 50 grams of silicone, add 100 milliliters of thinner. This ratio is key to ensuring the mixture works properly. But combining these two ingredients isn't as simple as it seems. To facilitate the process and ensure a more efficient and homogeneous mixture, I decide to improvise an ingenious and creative device. I take three sturdy nylon cable ties, carefully intertwine them one by one, and firmly attach them to the end of a well-fitted metal rod. The final shape resembles a small homemade propeller, simple yet extremely functional, and I quickly fit everything precisely into the chuck of my electric drill, ready to spring into action and amaze with its performance. When I turn on the machine, the magic begins. The propeller spins, mixes, dissolves, and the texture transforms before my eyes. The silicone and thinner, previously so distinct, now combine in a homogeneous and surprising solution. But there's still something missing. Like a painter facing a blank canvas, I add the third ingredient, liquid pigment. I chose red, vibrant, and intense. But you can use whatever color best suits your idea. A generous amount is enough to bring the mixture to life. The liquid gains hue and depth and is ready to use. Carefully, I pour everything into a convenient container, ready for the next step. And now the mystery begins to unfold. In front of me, a simple solid clay brick. Nothing special, just raw, unfinished, rustic, and completely natural, waiting for an unexpected transformation. Using a brush, I dip it into the newly created solution and begin applying the first coat. Almost immediately, the brick absorbs the liquid, revealing an unexpected shine and a stunning color transformation. In just a few seconds, the previously raw and lifeless surface begins to take on a renewed appearance, as if revitalized before our eyes. Ideally, wait approximately two minutes before applying the second coat, ensuring uniformity, depth, and a more refined finish. What previously appeared dull and worthless now reveals an intense, vibrant, and homogeneous hue, reminiscent of a fully restored piece. To achieve maximum resistance, the curing time is approximately six hours to the touch, especially for applications performed outdoors. But I don't stop there. I want to test the limits of this homemade paint. I place before me an ancient piece of wood, battered by the sun, the rain, and the relentless passing of the long years. Brush in hand, I spread the mixture over the wood surface. There's no need for a white primer or any special preparation. The material absorbs the paint on its own, as if it were made for it. With the first coat, imperfections begin to disappear. With the second, the transformation is complete, revealing a new, vibrant appearance. In just a few minutes, what once seemed worn and disposable is reborn with strength, elegance, and a stunning finish. The ideal drying time is approximately six hours, varying depending on the region and whether the application is indoors or outdoors. And the most surprising thing? The finish is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also functional and long-lasting. This blend behaves like a true high-performance professional paint. It's completely waterproof, easily water-resistant, doesn't peel over time, and can be washed without losing its shine or color intensity. It works perfectly on exterior surfaces constantly exposed to rain and sun, but it can also be applied indoors, offering savings, practicality, versatility, and impressive results that few could imagine possible with something so simple. 
Now stop for a moment and think with me. Who would have thought that thinner and silicone, combined in such a simple and precise ratio, could create something so useful and surprising? A homemade, affordable, easy to prepare paint that transforms various surfaces and delivers strength, durability, and beauty all at once, surpassing even many conventional solutions. Have you ever heard of a mixture that uses only white PVA glue and silicone, but which with a few clever tricks can be transformed into something extremely useful and durable? Today, I'll show you how to make this combination and further enhance its properties, creating a product that can surprise you with its strength and versatility. To begin, I grab a simple container. Here I'm using a disposable cup but any other container you have on hand will work, as long as it's sturdy and allows for thorough stirring. I pour a generous amount of silicone into it, the same kind used for sealing gaps, which is both durable and elastic. Next, I pour in the same proportion of white PVA glue, which is known for its adhesion and versatility. At this point, we have two distinct components, but the transformation hasn't truly begun yet. This is where the third element comes in, ethanol. The proportion is important. I use twice as much ethanol as the silicone and glue combined. This liquid acts as a diluent, breaking down the initial resistance of the components and allowing them to integrate evenly. As it falls into the glass, the ethanol infiltrates the silicone and glue, and gradually their textures begin to change. Please share your thoughts and comment on where you're watching from, your city or country. It's always amazing to see where this content is reaching, to meet the people who are part of this community. And of course, this helps me produce content that's increasingly aligned with you, wherever you are in the world. To speed things up and ensure everything is smooth, I improvised a tool. Two clamps, a screw, and a wooden stick, all attached to a screwdriver. This creates a homemade mixer that spins quickly and forces the ingredients together. I turn on the screwdriver, and the noise already indicates that the mixture is taking shape. The edges of the cup begin to show a thicker, stickier liquid. It's a clear sign that the ethanol is doing its job, turning the glue and silicone into a single, dense, liquid mass. When this texture is uniform, I move on to the next step, which will change not only the appearance, but also the strength of the formula. I add the cement approximately three heaping tablespoons, carefully scooping out the cement to maintain the exact measurement. As soon as the powder begins to fall into the container, it's as if it's immediately sucked into the liquid. With the base strengthened by cement, it's time to give the product personality. This is where paint colorant comes in, transforming not only the appearance, but also the identity of the mixture. Today I chose a bright shade of red, but the choice is entirely personal. You can opt for blue, green, yellow, or any other color that suits your purpose. The mixer kicks into action again, and little by little, the hue spreads evenly throughout the dough, creating an intense, vibrant color that brings the mixture to life and signals that it's almost ready to use. Finally, you can transfer all the contents to another, more practical container, which will make application much easier. Now finally, it's time to put this mixture into action. Before me is a rough, colorless, raw concrete sidewalk. I make precise markings with masking tape, creating divisions and patterns that will give the result a professional touch. To apply, I use a small roller, but you can also use a brush if you prefer more precision in smaller areas or difficult corners. I spread the mixture slowly over the surface, ensuring each section receives even and even coverage. The first layer adheres firmly, creating a solid base, although it has a slightly matte appearance, which is natural due to the cement in the composition. After observing the beginning of drying and noticing that the surface is well stabilized, I return to apply the second coat. At this stage, I use more controlled and constant movements, covering any gaps left previously and further enhancing the finish's strength and durability. The minimum drying time is about three hours, during which time I closely monitor the transformation. The color intensifies, the texture becomes more uniform, and the entire surface gains rigidity, ready to withstand long-term use. Now it's time to show the results of my homemade paint for raw concrete. As soon as I remove the tape, the contrast is immediate. Uniform color, a beautiful finish, 
and a slightly rubbery texture that prevents peeling and allows for washing without losing its shine. The application was simple, but the effect is durable and moisture resistant. This is because the silicone creates a waterproof and flexible layer. The cement ensures adhesion and firmness, and the PVA glue bonds everything together into a stable base. The result is a high-performance homemade paint made with common materials, but capable of outperforming many industrial paints.